In this video, I'm going to be proving some trig identities. If you haven't watched part one, the introduction to proving trig identities, then click this link. If you want to try proving these identities on your own, then go ahead. Otherwise, you could just keep watching for these examples. This is the first identity that we're going to prove. We got a separate our left side and our right side. So on the left side, we have one over one minus sine x minus one over one plus sine x. And on our right side, we have two times tan x and that's over cos x. So the left side looks a little bit more complex. So let's start with that. We have two fractions here. Let's actually combine these two fractions. We do not have the same denominator, so let's do something to get the same denominator. We have one minus sine x here and one plus sine x here, so we need to make sure we have one minus sine x and one plus sine x in our denominator. So the first fraction, we're gonna multiply this by one plus sine x both numerator and denominator. So we're keeping this one minus sine x and we're multiplying by one plus sine x over one plus sine x. In our second fraction, we need to get one minus sine x in the denominator. So we need to multiply by one minus sine x over one minus sine x. So when we multiply these, we're going to have a common denominator. In the denominator, we have one minus sine x times one plus sine x. So let me actually just rewrite that. Our first fraction just turns into one plus sine x, and that's over one minus sine x times one plus sine x. And then our second fraction is one minus sine x, and that's over one plus sine x times one minus sine x. And we do have the same denominator, so since we have the same denominator, we can combine this into one fraction. So in the denominator, we're going to have one minus sine x times one plus sine x. And in the numerator, we have one plus sine x minus this whole thing. So we need to distribute that minus sign. So this is just going to become minus one. And then this minus negative sine x is going to become plus sine x. So in the numerator, we have one plus sine x minus one plus sine x. Now let's combine everything in the numerator first. So we have one minus one, and that's just zero. Sine x plus sine x, that's just two x, or two sine x. And let's look at the denominator. Can we do anything with a denominator? In the denominator, we have one minus sine x multiplied by one plus sine x. Do you notice anything about this? Well, in each bracket, we have two terms. The first term in each bracket is a one. The second term is sine x. And in one bracket, they're being subtracted. The other bracket, they're being added. So isn't this factored form of a difference of squares? Why don't we just expand this? So when we expand this, we're just going to get one minus sine squared x. And that's a difference of squares. If we were to factor that difference of squares, we would get this factored form. Well, one minus sine squared x, doesn't that look familiar? Think about our Pythagorean identities. So our Pythagorean identity is sine x squared or sine squared x plus cos squared x is equal to one. If we rearrange this identity and subtract sine squared x, we're going to get that cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x, which is what we have in the denominator. So we can make that substitution. So on our left side, we have 2 sine x in the numerator, and in our denominator, we're going to have cos squared x. 
and that's because of our Pythagorean identity. And I can't think of anything else to simplify on our left side, so let's actually just move on to our right side. On the right side in the numerator, we have 2 tan x. So let's rewrite that tan x in terms of sine and cos. So this would just be 2 times sine x over cos x all over cos x. And we can do that substitution because we know that tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. So 2 times sine x over cos x is just 2 sine x over cos x. And we're dividing by cos x. Cos x as a fraction is just cos x over 1. And since we're dividing a fraction by another fraction, we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So we would be multiplying this by 1 over cos x. And let's actually combine these two fractions. They're just being multiplied. So we multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. So in the numerator, we have 2 sine x. And in the denominator, cos x times cos x is just cos squared x. And that's actually what we got on the left side. So therefore, the left side is equal to the right side. And we have proved this identity. Here's our next trig identity that we're going to prove. On our left side, we have 1 plus cotan theta over cosecant theta. And on our right side, we have sine theta plus cosine theta. So the left side definitely looks more complex. We have a cotangent and cosecant. Let's actually change those both in terms of sine and cos. So we know that the cotangent is the reciprocal of tan. So since tan is equal to sine over cos, the cotangent is equal to cos theta over sine. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So the cosecant of theta is equal to 1 over sine theta. So let's make these substitutions. On our left side in the numerator, we're going to get 1 plus cos theta over sine theta. And in our denominator, we're going to get 1 over sine theta. Since we have a fraction that's being divided by another fraction, we know we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So we have 1 plus cos theta over sine theta. And we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over sine theta, which is just sine theta. So we got to multiply these. So that means we're distributing this sine theta. So sine theta times 1 is just sine theta. And sine theta times cos theta over sine theta is just sine theta times cos theta over sine theta. Now we have a sine theta in both the numerator and denominator here, so we can actually cancel these two things out. So we're just going to be left with sine theta plus cos theta. And that's actually exactly what we have on the right side. So therefore, we have proof that the left side is equal to the right side, and this identity is true. Here is our next identity. On the left side, we have 2 cos squared theta minus 1, and on the right side, we have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. So on the left side, we have 2 cos squared theta. Well, 2 cos squared theta is the same thing as cos squared theta plus cos squared theta. And then we have that minus 1 at the end. And I separated that for a reason. I'm going to keep that first cos squared theta at the front. Cos squared theta minus 1. Can we use that somewhere? Can we replace something? Well, we have our Pythagorean identity. Remember, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1. Now we can do some rearranging. What if we move this 1 over the other side and subtracted it, and actually move this sine squared theta to the other side and subtracted it? So we would have 
cos squared theta minus one, and that's equal to negative sine squared theta. So let's make that substitution. On our left side, we're gonna keep this first cos squared theta, and cos squared theta minus one is just equal to minus sine squared theta. So we used our Pythagorean identity and substituted it in. And on our left side, we're actually just left with cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And that's exactly what we have on our right side. So therefore, our left side is equal to our right side, and this identity is true. And here's our next identity. On our left side, we have cos x minus 1 over 1 minus secant x. And on our right side, we have cos x plus 1 over 1 plus secant x. Let's change secant x and rewrite it in terms of cos. So our numerator is going to stay the same. In our denominator, we're going to have 1 minus 1 over cos x, because we know that secant x is just equal to 1 over cosine of x, because secant is just the reciprocal of cos. So what can we do now? I'm actually going to keep the numerator the same, cos x minus 1. In the denominator, we have 1 minus 1 over cos x. So let's actually change 1 into a fraction so that we have the denominator of cos x. 1 would be the same thing as cos x over cos x. So then now I have cos x over cos x minus 1 over cos x. So we have the same denominator. So let me just rewrite that fraction. Cos x minus 1 is going to be over cos x minus 1 over cos x. And we're dividing by a fraction here, which means we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So cos x minus 1 was our numerator, and we need to multiply by cos x over cos x minus 1. So we flipped that fraction in the denominator. And now we have something common in both the numerator and denominator. We can cancel out this cos x minus 1. So that means on our left side, we're just left with cos x. So on the right side, we're going to keep the numerator the same, cos x plus 1. And in the denominator, we're going to rewrite the secant of x in terms of cos. So it's going to be 1 plus 1 over cos x. In the numerator, we're going to keep that the same. We have cos x plus 1. And in the denominator, we are going to turn that 1 into a fraction, but have the same denominator as 1 over cos x. So this is going to become cos x over cos x. Plus 1 over cos x. Now we can combine those fractions. Numerator stays exactly the same. So this just becomes cos x plus 1 over cos x. So we're dividing by a fraction, which means we're going to be multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to have cos x plus 1 times our reciprocal, cos x over cos x plus 1. So similar to our left side, we can cross out this cos x plus 1 in the numerator and the denominator because it's common. And on our right side, we are left with cos x. Therefore, our left side is in fact equal to our right side, and we have proved this identity. So here's our last identity. On our left side, we have theta, but I'm just going to switch that to x, so we're using x throughout the whole thing. So on the left side, we have 2 over cos squared x. 
And on our right side, we have 1 over 1 plus sine x plus 1 over 1 minus sine x. So we have two fractions that are going to be added, but we have different denominators, and we need the same denominator in order to add them. So we need the lowest common multiple. In one denominator, we have 1 plus sine x, and the other denominator has 1 minus sine x. So our first fraction, we can multiply both numerator and denominator by 1 minus sine x. So we're going to multiply by 1 minus sine x over 1 minus sine x. And this is just like multiplying by 1. Then our second fraction, we have 1 over 1 minus sine x. And we need to multiply this by 1 plus sine x over 1 plus sine x. So now we're going to have 1 minus sine x, and that's over 1 plus sine x times 1 minus sine x. And our second fraction is going to be 1 plus sine x over 1 minus sine x times 1 plus sine x. So we have the same denominator, now we can just combine our numerator. So we have 1 minus sine x plus 1 plus sine x. And let's look at our denominator for a second. Doesn't this look familiar to you? Isn't it factored form of a difference of squares? So if we were to expand this, we would just get 1 minus sine squared x. And that's our denominator. And if we actually add everything in the numerator, well, 1 plus 1 is 2, and negative sine x plus sine x is 0. So we're just left with 2 in the numerator. And in the denominator, we're just left with 1 minus sine squared x. And can we do anything with that 1 minus sine squared x? Well, doesn't that look familiar? Haven't you memorized the Pythagorean identity by now? It's just sine squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1. So when we subtract sine squared x from our Pythagorean identity, cos squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. So we can substitute that in. So we're going to get 2 over cos squared x. And that's exactly what we have on the left side. Therefore, our left side is equal to our right side. And our identity is true. We have proved this trig identity.